time now to answer some of your business questions. Norm and Ari are with us once again. The first question is from the managing partner of a public relations firm. In the past year alone, we've had over 33% growth. We started in New York in 2009 with only me, and now we have five full-time employees and several interns, and we're growing rapidly. So how fast is too fast to grow? It's a nice problem to have, right? <laughs> it seems like, what's, what's the other problem? The car is too nice, the uh, boyfriend is too good looking? <laughs> what is she got well, right in about? The, 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 that's but. a great question. And, and, and it, there's two, there's two uh, things you have to ask yourself. First is why? Why am I growing this fast? Mm -hmm. Is there a reason? And the second is, Making sure you don't outgrow your cash because good businesses can go out of business if they run out of cash. So when she says, how do I know if I'm growing too fast, you look at your cash. The other issue there is the people. You can grow very fast, but you may not necessarily be able to hire the right people that quickly. And there you end up with a large team of people that are not A players and all of a sudden you've got a totally different company you don't want to be a part of. So what do you guys suggest that you do? Take some time off and spend a day evaluating people, cash, anything else? Yeah, I think she has to look down the road. Where do I want to be in three years and why do I want to be there? And do I have enough resources to get there, both in cash and as Ari said, in That's a good people. question, too. Do you want to grow? Exactly. I mean, you get on the bandwagon and it's hard to get off and maybe you need to stop and think. Is She's got to decide it? what her life goals are. Does she want a multi-million dollar company or does she want to do something that she loves? And that could be both, but she may find that she expands beyond her comfort zone. And success is just right outside your comfort level, but not to the point where you feel overwhelmed. Right. Okay, let's move on to the next one. This is a question from the CEO of a real estate firm with a special focus on social entrepreneurship. Once you achieve success, say, in a local market, how do you take that business and franchise it? What are the first steps that you have to take in order to make a successful business franchisable? You know, franchises are cookie cutters. So you have to set up the cookie cutter. I'm not sure one's enough. You mm -hmm. may have to open up two or three different places. And you have to have uh, manuals and you have to have procedures that can be followed and duplicated over and over again. The most successful franchises, the biggest one like Subway, uh, you walk into a Subway store anywhere, the food tastes exactly the same. So when you're franchising or you're thinking of franchising, you have to have a service or a product that is transferable the exact same way. And I'm not sure this early in this guy's career whether he's ready to do that or not. I go again to the people issue, which is when you start a franchise, I run a volunteer organization that's in 13 cities, and some of those cities thrive and some of them struggle. And you've got to find someone who's willing to lead, to run a business, but someone who's also willing to follow that step-by-step -step manual that Norm talks about. And that's a difficult mix to follow. Someone who wants to take charge, someone who also wants to go by the book, those are tough people to find. And that may be your first step when you want a franchise, is finding those people. All right, let's move on to the next one. This is a question about hiring your first employee. When do you know to hire that first employee so that, um, and, and what role should they play? What is that key hire, the first key hire? It's got to be an area where you feel, I got to find someone who can do this better than I do it. Uh, I think if you're going to hire your first person, as Norm talked about earlier, that's building your corporate culture. And you want to find someone who's going to lead you into a better path. This is not a time to just hire someone to fill in the work or to loosen and, and lessen your load, but to find someone that you can turn around and say, you do this better than I do, I'm going to let you lead. Well, I disagree. <laughs> you're, never gonna <laughs> you're never going to find anybody as good as you. And most people look for people who are as good as them or better than them. You find somebody different. First of all, our attitude is you hire for attitude. Um, and that's the first thing. You can teach people what to do things. Um, the second thing is that uh, make sure you hire somebody who has the ability to learn and the ability to want to learn. So that's when. And the question was, when do you do it? Mm -hmm. Uh, and the question, the answer is that as you're building your business, you're going to know. Do you have enough money to do it? Do you have enough work for them to do it? Uh, can you take yourself out of that position and do other things within the company? Norm, Ari, thank you so much for all of your advice. It was very helpful. And if any of you out there have a question for our experts, all you have to do is go to our website. The address is openforum.com slash your business. There, just hit the Ask the Show link to submit a question for our panel. Again, the website is openforum.com slash your business. Or if you'd rather, you can email us your questions or comments. The address is your business at msnbc.com.